千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Eric Lin, where we delve deeply into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. As you can see here, the name of the story is the death of Johnson's wife. One of the the great stories from Zhuangzi. Let me share it with you. This story comes to us from the time when the wife of Zhuangzi has died. His friend Huizi, also a scholar and a philosopher, was worried about Zhuangzi. You know what's happening? Is he doing okay? What's happening with him? His wife just died. So Huizi wanted to visit Zhuangzi to express con condolence. The good friends. When Huizi arrived, he saw that Zhuangzi was sitting on the ground, drumming on a pot, singing a song, much as what you see here in this slide. This was puzzling to Huizi. He's thinking, hmm. My friend Zhuangzi does not seem to be grieving at all, and this seems this seems inappropriate. So Huizi went to Zhuangzi. He said, "What are you doing? Your wife has passed away. She's been there for you all these years, right? She, along with you, have raised your children, built a family with you, built a life with you, right?" Now she's gone, and I can see that evidently you feel no sadness. You're not shedding any tears. You're drumming and singing. Okay, well this is a this is a little bit too much, don't you think? Now, Zhuangzi, in responding to his friend Huizi, he knew that Huizi was very well meaning, so he explained. He said, "My friend, this is not what it looks like." He said, "Of course, I was struck with grief when my wife passed away. How could I not be? But then I came upon this realization. This realization was all about the life that I thought she lost. You see, the life that she lost." That I assumed was hers to lose was not something she had in the first place. So this is not something that Huizi could follow. He's even more puzzled than before. So Zhuangzi explained. He said, "Well, during the time before her birth, she did not possess life. Obviously, she did not possess the physical form that you came to know as my wife." Of course, she did not possess anything at all associated with what you know as my wife. Of course, obviously. Well, she ended up in the exact same state. So there wasn't actually anything that she lost. She didn't have it before. She gained something. Now she doesn't have them again. She didn't actually lose anything. She gained a life between the two states of not having anything. So this is all reasoning. This is all making a lot of sense. And Huizi had to admit that. Now he never he never thought about human life in quite that way, but he followed the reasoning thought process that Zhuangzi was explaining. So then. Zhuangzi continued with that same train of thought. He said, 
think of her death as transformation. It's the transformation that is very similar to when she was born. Now, prior to all this, prior to being born in the state between existence and non-existence, that initial transformation gave rise to energy. The energy gave rise to physical form. That physical form took on life to become a human being. My wife. Now it's the other way around. It's a continuation of the transformation that now returns her to the Tao from when she came in the first place. This whole process, non-existence to life, life back to non-existence again, is just like the changing of seasons. It's all completely in accordance with nature. So somehow, to Huizi, the behavior from, from Zhuangzi, you know, the drumming, the singing that he thought was so inappropriate when he came, when he came in, no longer seemed as inappropriate as before. In understanding, he said, hmm, I see. Since the transformation is perfectly in accordance with nature, it's not really something that we need to be sad about. Just like you and I will not cry over autumn changing into winter, or indeed any season into the season that comes after. So, so Zhuangzi nodded. Zhuangzi said, yes, she is now resting peacefully in the hereafter. Now she doesn't have all the constraints and limitations of life. The more I think about that, the more silly it seems for me to cry my eyes out. I will always miss her, but it is not necessary for me to grieve for her as if her death was a great tragedy. The end. You can tell Zhuangzi definitely had a different way to think about life. And what he expressed in story form is indeed everything that we have talked about just now, about the realization of the Tao of life and death. Let's break it down. Let's talk about the Tao of death before we return once again to the Tao of life and death. First of all, everything that Zhuangzi said applied equally well to all loved ones, you know, not, not just the spouse. It applied it applies to all loved ones, all friends who pass away, family members. It also applies to your own mortality and mine. One's own mortality, we're all gonna go at some point. And that's why it's important to be thinking about this. And then another point, just like Huizi, just like Zhuangzi, before, before he had his realization, we have this tendency to think, well, you know, this is my life. This life belongs to me. My lifetime is mine and mine alone. We think it belongs to us. Does it really? If it is yours, it is certainly not yours indefinitely. It is yours temporarily. Your life, this life, this material existence you are living now, you think of it as yours, but I say is yours only temporarily like something you borrow, something you borrow and you're gonna have to return at some point. Like a book that you checked out of a library, at some point you have to return that book so someone else can check it out. You're free to check out the same book again later on. Of course, there is no same book because that book will have been used. It will be a book in different, different part of the space-time continuum. It's not the same river that you step back in 
a second time. So you can check out a book, quote unquote, and it may read like the book that you read before, but it's not the same copy. It's like a car that you rent in order to go from one place to another. When you're done with your trip, when your road trip driving that rental car, it's time to return the rental car. While you are driving, you may temporarily think that this is my car. Well, it's the car that you are driving in that moment, I admit. But eventually, you have to return the car to the rental car agency. So when you think about it that way, that it's not something that you own, but something that you're checking out, borrowing temporarily, then it's clear that coming into life is an opportunity. Opportunity that we have to, we have to make as much use out of it as we possibly can, because we have to return at some point to complete the gray circle. And this gray circle is about transitioning no different from all other transitions that occur in nature. This is where I reemphasize my previous point about how the end of a season is not the end of all seasons. It's no accident. The story that I told you was a faithful translation of the original story told by Zhuangzi. It's no accident that he decided to use the changing of seasons in a very deliberate way. It's a deliberate choice. What is said is that, well, you may be sad for a moment that summer is coming to an end, spring or summer is coming to an end, but it's not the last spring or the last summer in time, spring or summer will come again. Hence the great circle. The process continues on, the Tao continues on. And therefore, I say once again to everyone who's gathering together in this meeting, right now, right here and now, what we're all experiencing together, this is only a small part in an infinite journey. Your journey, my journey, this is just a small part of it. And I hope this is the part when a light comes on and you say, yes, that's exactly how reality works. This is life. Everything that I have talked about from Zhuangzi today comes from the Tao of happiness. It's all about the Tao of life and death. In the Tao of happiness, what I have done here is that I have included the last part from the table of contents to share with everyone. The whole book is described as the life journey. In a journey, in any journey, there is always the beginning of the journey. The journey is the overarching metaphor for the entire book, and the beginning is the departure. This can be the beginning of your life, you know, your birth, or the beginning of your realization, epiphany about the life journey itself. Maybe the beginning of that is today. Maybe it's right now. Because in a sense, you are awakening to life. While you are on the trip, while you are engaged in this great journey, this sacred crest, there's travel advisory. That's another section from the book. And that's about all the things to watch out for, you know, the warning signs. And then there are travel tips. And that's tips on maximizing your experience, experience in this life. Now, every trip comes to an end. That's the arrival. If departure is your birth, then arrival is the end of your life, which is why you see part four arrival and there are five chapters on death each one presenting a different teaching from the Tao of life and death 
what you have just heard, the death of Johnson's wife, well, there is definitely lessons to be learned from that about the, the natural transitions and why should we let ourselves be overwhelmed with grief? If we understand how life actually works, then we can come to terms with it. We can function without being overwhelmed by grief. The second one there, what follows? The death of Johnson's friend. Well, it's all about what we do for one another, our soul companions in this lifetime. And then, and then there's more. There's so many different aspects to this Tao of life and death. The death of Johnson himself, it's all about detachment, all about letting go of attachments because we're never going to be able to take anything with us when we die. We can take the progress that we have made in this lifetime. And then there's more tears of fears. That's about fear of the unknown. You know, that's very much about death. Death is the great unknown. And how would you and I change our thinking if we had a better understanding? The last one there, the dream of the butterfly, that's the signature story from the entire canon of Zhuangzi's stories. It's the representation of Zhuangzi as a sage, the butterfly, the transformation of existence. So life, Zhuangzi says, is like a dream. And here again, he's being very deliberate in his choice of metaphors. The end of one dream is not the end of all dreams. This goes a little deeper than row, row, row your boat. Life is but a dream. It's talking about the reiterative theme of detachment. When you realize the similarities between life and a dream, you wouldn't be so caught up in the rage of the moment. So many lessons about that in the last part in the Tao of Happiness. And you know, I remember when, when I was interviewed by Huffington Post about this book, The Tao of Happiness, the question was asked, you know, hey, Derek, in this book about happiness, why do you have so many chapters devoted to death? And I answered honestly in the great tradition of the Tao. The answer is simple. Even though I know it's counterintuitive to a lot of people to talk about death so much, in a book about happiness, the reality is that it is only when we fully understand death and accept it with the clarity of the Tao, it's only then that we can start to live life to the fullest. It's how we fully embrace life. It's important. And I know it's not easy, but the happiness that you attain when you realize, when you understand the Tao of life and death, it's lasting. It takes effort to do this work. It can be difficult at times. But the happiness is the true happiness. When you master this Tao, true happiness in the sense that it endures the test of time. You begin to see your purpose in life. You begin to walk your path with intent. That's powerful. It's the happiness that is always present. You radiate this authentic inner joy when you have mastery. It doesn't matter what happens. It never goes away. You are liberated from fear.
Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.